So um, I'm going to talk about today um, our work about uh, label privacy at intersection from uh, fully homomorphic encryption with um, malicious security. So this is joint work with um, Zhu Hong Huang, Kim Lane, and Peter Rindel. Um, so I'll kind of give a roadmap of my talk. Um, so first, uh, we'll give an introduction to uh, our privacy at intersection protocol that's published at CCS last year. And um, then we'll introduce um, the improvements we made to it uh, during this year. Uh, first one is a um, new primitive called labeled PSI. Uh, I'll introduce its definition and uh, applications and um, uh, our implementation and performance. And then uh, we also did some uh, improvements or enhancements to our previous unbalanced PSI protocol, um, notably uh, adding some kind of malicious security, supporting larger items, and uh, achieving better performance. So that's the uh, plan. Uh, so first, uh, let me give a brief introduction of the uh, unbalanced version of the private set intersection. So you, you may already know what the private set intersection is. So basically, uh, two parties wish to find the intersection of their private sets without revealing anything else uh, other than the intersection. So in the unbalanced case, we assume that one of the party um, is, has a much smaller set. Uh, in this case, uh, the party which has the smaller set is also the receiver. So um, we only allow the receiver to learn the output. And the sender learns nothing. So why is this useful? So uh, this has uh, um, numerous applications, including private contact discovery, and malware detection, and online offline ad conversion. So these things are... Um, um, can use general PSI as well. But in unbalanced PSI specifically, we're assuming a very small um, restriction on the receiver. So the receiver doesn't need to do heavy computation or it doesn't need to um, transfer large amount of data between uh, receiver and sender. So um, it's uh, good in that sense. So in contact discovery, a uh, user is registered to some kind of messaging app such as um, WhatsApp. And it wished to um, ask to the WhatsApp server who in my contact list is also registered to the service so I can directly talk to them afterwards. But I don't want to reveal all my mobile contact to the server, maybe. So what I can do is that I can run the private set intersection with the server. And as the result of the computation, I get all the IDs uh, who are also registered to the service and also in my contact. And uh, there are some previous solutions. Of course, you can apply any of the existing uh, PSI protocol. There are a lot based on um, uh, multi-party computation. You can use garbled circuits, or um, there are some specialized solutions as well that performs pretty well. And uh, in last year's CCS, uh, we came up with this solution, which uses um, fully homomorphic encryption. And um, uh, so it's based on uh, lattice assumptions and has small uh, communication complexity in the unbalanced case. So notably, the communication only depends uh, linearly in a smaller set, whereas in multi-party computation protocols, the communication depends on the summation of the sizes of both sets. And uh, we also have an implementation based on the uh, CO library and uh, achieved a good practical performance. Uh, however, there, um, there is um, there are some drawbacks of the previous approach. Uh, one uh, drawback is that uh, the previous uh, protocol only works on 32-bit items. So this is kind of like an implementational issue, um, not, not on the level of the protocol, but still kind of annoying because 32-bit uh, is kind of short. And uh, also, uh, we need to take care of this, um, this thing called circuit privacy in FHE, uh, which says that so you need to um, basically smudge uh, your ciphertext with noise so that uh, the client cannot get or the receiver cannot get more information than it should know. Um, and this gives us some performance hit. And the uh, uh, last one is that our protocol is only secure in the semi-honest model, and um, uh, we like to uh, improve on that. OK, so uh, here are, uh, sum here's a summary of our improvements. Uh, we extended the previous protocol from 32 bits to kind of arbitrary length items. And we added uh, uh, some form of malicious security guarantee. I will explain more on that later. And uh, we also designed and implemented a labeled PSI protocol, which is also referred to as uh, PSI with data transfer in the literature. 
And uh, we can also uh, support some, some PSI with, uh, with certain computation, although uh, it's more in the future work. OK, so I've done the introduction. That's nice. So uh, now let me, uh, let me introduce label PSI. So instead of being called as uh, PSI with data transfer, sometimes it's also called PR by keyword. So you may already know that the PRR, or private information retrieval, uh, what it does is that a client holds an index uh, in a database, and the server holds the database. And as the result of the computation, the client retrieves the cor uh, correct uh, database element uh, without the server knowing that which element he, is, uh, he or she is interested in. So PR by keywords uh, extends this by saying that you don't have to actually know the index uh, of the item in the database. Uh, instead, you can just query by keyword, which is um, uh, what happens more, uh, more frequently in practice. And um, uh, so this protocol is basically um, in the picture where the, um, the receiver holds a small set of keys, and the server holds a dictionary of key value pairs. And as a result of the computation, the receiver gets all of the um, all of the values corresponding to the keys in its set. Um, so hopefully that sound is clear. And uh, this label PSI has uh, also a lot of applications. So just one example I can give is that uh, this screenshot I took um, of an invited talk at Crypto 2018. So it's about two months ago. And uh, so uh, so Google has this, uh, this problem of um, having their users submit phone numbers to the cloud and retrieve some user IDs attached to those phone numbers for some Google service. So for example, if you want to talk to someone, it's, this is kind of like the private contact discovery, but um, uh, instead of just uh, retrieving a yes or no, uh, you can also retrieve an ID or in some cases a public key. So then after this protocol, you can directly talk to uh, your friend using this uh, public key. Uh, so, and this, I think they um, did this estimation about eight to 10 years ago, then, and at that time, it was thought to be too expensive that it will take all the computing power of all the Google servers at that time. So my guess is that they didn't implement it, and it wasn't, it wasn't in the product. But, um, but now I think it's in a stage where it's more, um, more practical. And um, uh, another application is, um, uh, so I, I learned this from uh, Shai's talk this morning, where uh, you can have uh, location-based recommendations. For example, I can submit my location as key, and uh, the value corresponding to that key would be the maybe like the best coffee shop corresponding to that location. So using this protocol, I can get recommendations without sharing my location with the server. All right. So. Uh, what is the basic idea of our construction? So this is um, uh, also happened in a, in, a, in a previous paper. And uh, the basic idea is that um, there's, let's say the receiver just has one key, and the, serv uh, the sender has uh, a database of key value pairs. And in the previous paper, what we used for the private set intersection is that we just constructed and evaluated this polynomial, which evaluates to 0 for all the keys in the database. So basically, you get a 0 if your key is in the database, and you get some random stuff if it's not. And uh, so instead of evaluating this polynomial, we can also evaluate some kind of interpolation polynomial. So basically, you just run your usual polynomial interpolation uh, and get uh, coefficients of this polynomial h of x such that the value of h of x at the keys are equal to the items. So it's pretty easy. So of course, the, the items themselves can be larger than the keys. So in this case, what you can do is that you can split the items into uh, chunks, where each chunk is, has the same length as the key. And then you construct this uh, new polynomial f of x, and it has the property that if your key is equal to one of the keys in the database, it will give you the value. Otherwise, it gives you a random, uh, random number. And finally, you just return a pair where the first uh, uh, component of the pair is your f of k, and second component is uh, telling you whether the, the key is in the database or not. OK, so that's the high-level idea. 
and uh, what is the performance of our label PSI. So I, I think some of the advantages is um, uh, one of them is that you only have one round of communication. So the client or the receiver submits something and gets something back. And uh, you can also do a, a, a label PSI using PSI plus PIR. So briefly, this means that you first do a PSI with the server and you get yes or no um, uh, results. And for each result where there's a yes, you actually run the PIR or uh, assuming that you actually know the index and you can run a PIR for every item in the intersection and get the corresponding uh, item. Uh, but the problem is that they will uh, incur more rounds. And also um, uh, using PIR means that you may uh, be involved in heavy computations where you're making some uh, multi-server non-collusion assumptions. Um, so the, the four communication of our label PSI is uh, linear in the receiver set uh, and uh, logarithmic in the uh, sender set. And uh, the backward communication is uh, linear in the uh, receiver set times the length of the, the, the values. And sender computation is linear in the database size. So uh, we apply this label PSI construction so first we implement it and we applied it to the uh, one of the anonymous communication protocol called PUN. So in one of the subroutines of PUN, uh, each client actually needs to do a PR by keyword. And uh, this is achieved by uh, our labeled PSI as well. So previously we had some solution where we just um, uh, reduce PR by keyword to PR, but then we have to do multiple rounds of PR. So now this is just one round. And you can see from the table that we actually is uh, much faster and with smaller communication. All right. Okay, so that's the second part. Um, and for the last part of my talk, let me talk about uh, our enhancement to the previous PSI protocol. So. Uh, remember that uh, we used to be able to only deal with 32-bit items. So if we have like uh, really long items, then one thing we can do is to first do a pre-processing where we hash items to this uh, given length. And uh, this uh, log x plus log y plus lambda ensures that we, have, we still have small um, probability of collision. And uh, so after that, for realistic size sizes, it's about uh, maybe 80 to 100 bits. And then for those items, we use um, a batching technique, which is also used in the previous paper to, uh, to encode those elements in, as uh, FHE plain text and ciphertext. So, so this slide is somewhat technical, so uh, it's okay if, uh, if you, uh, it's hard to follow, but uh, I wanted to put it out there. So basically, um, in, the, in the FHE, uh, one ciphertext and usually pack a vector of plain text. And uh, the packing uh, is controlled by a lot of parameters. So the plain text space is considered fixed, but you can either pack a very tall and thin vector, or you can pack a short and bulky vector with the area being the same. So if you have really long items, then naturally the choice would be packing like a shorter vector and the more bulky so that every item can sort of fit into one slot of that vector. So uh, to do this, you will exploit the, the, uh, the display formulas. Basically, you, uh, that's the batching isomorphism. Uh, and the right-hand side is the vector, where the left-hand side is the plain text element. And uh, the optimization we uh, observed here is that in, instead of uh, evaluating the whole isomorphism, we can just evaluate the first part. So this, gives, uh, this has some uh, drawbacks. Because if you only evaluate the first part, then uh, it, you don't have the ability to basically do rotations in your plain text <laughs> slots. But for our application, because we don't need rotations, this is actually fine. So, and uh, the advantage of only evaluating the first map is that then we get much faster uh, encoding. And uh, in this table, we show that uh, if, you, if you really have um, a, a large D value, which means that each plain text slot is kind of big, then uh, doing this lazy version of batching is much faster than just uh, evaluating the whole thing. OK, and uh, so one other thing we do uh, to enhance the security is that we do some uh, pre-processing based on uh, oblivious pseudorandom function, or OPRF. So the idea of the OPRF is that for each item in the receiver set, 
it can engage in this OPRF protocol with the sender such that it gets the OPRF value where uh, the senders holds the OPRF key. So after these uh, OPRF invocations, um, the sender learns basically nothing, and it can evaluate uh, OPRF for all its, um, um, sorry, PRF for all its uh, items. And then in a, in a traditional PSI protocol, the sender can just send all those values to the receiver and the receiver can compare with its, uh, its PRF values to see which ones are in the intersection. But the problem of this approach, well, it's, it's not really a problem, but uh, this approach has a communication uh, that's linear to the larger set, for example. So we would like to somehow mitigate that. So instead of, instead of doing the, the sending phase, we just do our usual PSI protocol after the OPRF. So uh, basically the, the receiver will send certain informations about encryptions of its um, OPRF values, and the sender can just uh, evaluate the, the usual uh, function for set intersection and then received, uh, send back the result. And uh, this gives us security against malicious receiver because right now all the items that the sender has is uh, pretty, looks pretty random to the receiver. So it cannot obtain useful information about the items. Okay, and uh, so, uh, what is our defense against malicious sender? So uh, we have uh, certain ideas where the sender can choose, or I, I should say both parties can choose a certain function. And the function has the property that it requires a high depth uh, circuit to, uh, to evaluate. For example, it can be a polynomial of really high degree so that uh, it's higher than what the HE parameters we use can support. So this means that uh, if the sender doesn't have some item, then it cannot use the receiver's encryption of that item to compute encryption of the, uh, the label corresponding to that item. So basically, instead of running a PSI, now we run a label PSI with this H of X as the label. So as a result, the sender cannot arbitrarily enlarge the intersections. Uh, however, this is now perfect because the, now the sender can still choose some function and force the intersection to be smaller depending on the, the, the value of the function. So it's not, uh, uh, I should say, it, it is not um, fully malicious security against malicious sender, but uh, um, I think there's some, there is some work towards that direction. Okay, so here's the uh, slide about performance. So we chose to use 5,000 uh, uh, items for the receiver, and uh, this is 60 million items for the for the sender. And uh, you can see that um, for our protocol, it actually achieves a, a very small communication because it's only logarithm in the in the larger set, and its uh, running time is uh, uh, is good. And uh, the other protocols require linear communication. And uh, also notably, our protocol only requires single server and has one round. So there is a point on the left which has uh, better running time. So this is uh, some work um, uh, earlier this year, uh, which allows the, the server to send something called a cuckoo filter to, to the receiver and uh, um, uh, achieves a good uh, a good running time, but it has some probability of false positives, and uh, um, I think there's like a trade-off between the speed and the correctness. So, and there's this just last to uh, <laughs> second to last slide is an advertisement that I just learned that uh, the the 3.0 version of the seal library is available and Im implements the CKKS approximate computation scheme in the residue number arithmetic, also known as RNS. It's written in modern C++ and it's available at sealcrypto.org. Uh, with that, I will conclude uh, my talk. Thank you very much.